the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Tell you about something about the nation of Islam, some of which you know and some you don't know. But I want to do something more important than that. I want to tie it together with Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because if it's not tied to Allah and his messenger then what are we doing? We as Muslims can negotiate about a lot of things but there's one thing that's non-negotiable and that is the oneness of God. You want to argue about what we should do as Muslim youth and all of that? You want to argue about hip-hop and all of that? We can argue about that. But the one thing is non-negotiable is the oneness of God. Indeed, Allah mentioned in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ مُسْيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّكُونَ Oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you. Muslims fast in the month of Ramadan. Jews fast. They don't fast when we fast. Christians fast. They don't fast when we fast. But they fast. So we can negotiate about that. But the one non-negotiable is the oneness of Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us that when Allah revealed to Muhammad in the heavens about prayer, God gave him the commandment to pray 50 prayers a day. And remarkably, the Prophet said, Musa. And I returned with those 50 prayers until I ran into Prophet Moses. And Moses said, what did your Lord command? He said, he commanded us to pray 50 prayers a day. And Moses said, Farjit ila rabika fa inna umataka la tutiku thalika. Go back to your Lord. Your ummah, your nation would not be able to pray 50 prayers a day. Remarkably, Prophet Muhammad goes back and forth and he negotiates with Allah until Allah finally orders five prayers a day. Muslims pray, Christians pray, Jews pray. We don't pray the same way. Because Prophet Muhammad says, Pray as you see me pray. So we can negotiate how you pray. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. People pray. Allah will judge in the end. But there's one thing that's non-negotiable. And that is God is one. I remember reading the Bible. I'm not a scholar of the Bible at all. Having once been a Christian and, and having read the Bible, I remember certain passages. I remember someone asked Jesus, Master, what is the first and greatest commandment? He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our Lord is one. and We should love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. And the second commandment is like unto the first that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Many things we can negotiate about, but there's one non-negotiable, and that is the oneness of Allah. I would argue that nobody knows anything about God, Allah, except for what he reveals uh, about himself. You want to know about him? You have to find it through the scriptures. What did Jesus say? What did Moses say? What did Abraham say? What did Noah say? What did Adam say? What did David say? What did Solomon say? And we learn about the will of God through his prophets. And in the end, the last prophet, Muhammad, 
peace and blessing be upon him. What did he say? And I would argue tonight that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, as the last messenger of Allah, knows more than anyone the will of Allah. And therefore, the things that he says and the things that he does is based upon the commandment of Allah. Your messenger errs not, your messenger errs not, nor is he misled. Uh, it's nothing but revelation revealed. Now, prophet doesn't speak out of his own desire, but it is revelation revealed like all the other prophets. One non-negotiable is the oneness of Allah. What about the history of Islam in America? 1930 began a movement called the Nation of Islam. From 1930 to 1975, a man by the name of Elijah Muhammad headed that movement, headed that movement for 45 years. In Hudra, 1969, before you were born, I was a college in New York University, and I, jo I joined that movement, the Nation of Islam. Many of you have heard about it. Any student of Islam would read any of the literature of the Nation of Islam, read the book, Elijah Muhammad's uh, Message to the Black Man, the our Savior has arise, arrived, and the fall of America, or how to eat to live. If anybody would read those books, they would say, what is this? This is, has nothing to do with Islam. This is not Islam. How could you call a man named Father Muhammad God? How could you call Elijah Muhammad the messenger of God? How could you fast in the month of December rather than the month of Ramadan? Why don't you make pilgrimage to Mecca? And if you would say all of that, you would be correct. You say, well, this, this, and this, what is this? But I'd like to ask you a question. What does Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, and Imam Siraj Wahaj have in common? All of us had our origin in the nation of Islam. Malcolm Little, Malcolm X, al Haj Malik Shabazz, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, Jeffrey Kears, Siraj Wahaj. And you know what? These are those that you know. Yeah, we know Imam Siraj. We know, we heard about Malcolm. We heard about Muhammad Ali. We love them. But the origin, where did they come from? And what you don't know, there are some Imams around this country, brilliant, that I wish that Ikna and Isna and Care would bring to their conferences. Imam Yahya Abdullah out of Dallas area. Brilliant. Imam Qasim Ahmed in Tampa, Florida. Imam uh, Wazir uh, Ali out of Houston, Texas. And all over the country, you have brilliant Muslims that you don't even know about because of where they came from. They came from, like Imam Siraj, like Muhammad Ali, like Malcolm, they came from the nation of Islam. But I want to take a few moments to let us understand something about our Creator. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said, in that dina yusrun, he said that the religion is easy. Allah revealed in the Quran, Allah desires for you ease. He doesn't desire for you difficulty. Prophet uh, Aisha radiallahu anh, the wife of the prophet, said that whenever the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, were given two choices, he always chose that which was easiest. Assuming that they were not a sin 
And if there were a sin, he would be the furthest one away from the sin. I want, to, want you to put things in perspective. As I, I'm not, I'm not going to give you an apology of the nation of Islam. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you a rationale of the nation of Islam. I'm not going to do something. I'm going to do something more uh, important than that. So Elijah Muhammad died in 1975. And how befitting that his son, Imam Waratuddin Muhammad, at that time Wallace Muhammad, would become the leader. I was there. Elijah Muhammad died, I think, on the 25th of February. The next day, the 26th, was a national holiday for the nation of Islam. I was there, and the nation was there, and we chose Imam Waratuddin Muhammad to be the new leader the son of Elijah Muhammad. This man, you have got to appreciate what that man did. I'm sitting there. Elijah Muhammad just died. I'm sitting there on what you call front row security. I was on security that day. The leader just died. The man who led the nation of Islam for 45 years, he just died. And there is son, at that time, Wallace Muhammad. He stands in front of us in what is called the FOI, Food of Islam, a suit. And he began to teach the community. In that first year, he did what Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, told him, told Mu'adh to do. He sent Mu'adh to Yemen. He said, Fayyikun awala matadu'uhum illa wahadullah ta'ala. Let the first thing that you do, the first thing is you invite the people to the oneness of Allah. Why? Because the one non negotiable is absolutely the oneness of Allah. So therefore, let the first thing you do is teach them the oneness of Allah. And then the Prophet told Mu'ad, and when they understand that, then, then inform them that God has made it come upon them to make five prayers a day. And when they pray, then tell them that God has made incumbent upon them to give zakat, to give charity. Teach them how to do it. Imam Muhammad in the first year told his community that Father Muhammad is not God. Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he's only one of them and he is the one that we worship. The first year. Right after that, he began to teach his community how to pray to Mecca, like the rest of the Muslims. First year, he taught his followers to fast in the month of Ramadan. Took a delegation of his followers to Mecca for Hajj, pilgrimage. All of these things he did. And he did it right away. So what you have seen is one of the greatest mass conversions ever in the history of this country. One man, and you don't understand it, that this man, Imam Muhammad, I'm telling you, oh, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, I love you, man. I love you too much. I would, I would if, if I had the guts, I would come there and kiss you. I ain't got that kind of courage, though. But I think, Sheikh Omar, if me, or you, or Yasir, or Hamza Yusuf, Zaid Shakir, Abdullah Hakim Quick, any of us, in 1975, when the nation, Elijah Muhammad died, and put any one of us there to lead that community, I don't think that we could have done it. Allahu alam. I don't think we could have done it. Wallahi, I don't think we could have done it. Why? Because Imam Muhammad was accepted because he's the son of Elijah Muhammad. So he came, and already we accepted him because in the theology, we, we, will learn, we learned that his son, Wallace, would help him. So he gradually, but in the first year, changed the theology of the whole nation of Islam, and then this group became Sunni Muslim. Now, I'm going to say something now that I haven't probably said publicly before. I'm going to say it now because I want you to know it. In 1975, when Elijah Muhammad died, and Imam Muhammad began to preach, I accepted Imam Muhammad. Six years later, in 1981, 
If you do the math, we opened up Masjid at Taqwa in Brooklyn 30 years ago. That I left Imam Walafuddin Muhammad. Why did I leave him? Because at that time, as I understood Islam, I thought there were some differences. After studying him from a distance, I would read the paper every week. I would see what Imam Muhammad is doing. What is he preaching to his community? And I said, oh, okay. And I began to understand. Umar, when we first, as non-Arab speakers, began to learn the Arabic language, one of the first things that they would teach us is to say, كيف حالك? How you doing? كيف حالك don't really mean how you doing. It does mean how you doing, but don't really mean how you doing. It means how you doing, but don't really, really mean how you doing. The word hal in Arabic is condition, circumstance, state. So when you say, كيف حالكم, كيف حالك, how's your condition? What's your state like? And most people, a brother says, I, give, I can give you, you think I'm, you think I'm going to make this up. I guarantee you, most people, you ask how you doing, we don't really wait for the answer. Try this. Let someone say, how you doing? Say, you know what? I'm homeless today. I just lost my job, and I'm sick. They'll say, Allahu Akbar. Because we don't listen to each other. It's like a ritual. Right? We expect, how you doing? I'm doing all right. All right. But you know, the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon them, they're serious. Because when Hamdullah when he met Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr said, Kefa anta? Yeah, alhamdulillah, how you doing? Right? Kefa, kefa anta? How's everything? You know what alhamdulillah said? Nafaka, alhamdulillah. I become a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr is listening. He don't say, Allahu Akbar. He said, why? He listen. Why you say that? Subhanallah. Matakulu, why you say that? And he said, why? And he said, come on, let's go to the Prophet. Peace and blessing be upon him. So he dealt with the issue. Whatever the issue was, he dealt with the issue. So when you study about Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, he is so wonderful, he always deals with our condition, our circumstances. I give you, there's about a hundred examples, I give you just a handful. You're supposed to fast in the month of Ramadan, right? Everybody's supposed to fast, right? But what about if you're sick or if you're traveling? Make it up later on. We're supposed to pray standing up, right? What if you can't stand up? You pray sitting down. What if you can't pray sitting down? You pray laying down. If you can't pray laying down, you pray with your eyes. But Allah always has a way because he thinks about everybody. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said that I've been given five things that no other prophet were given. And there's one thing that I want to mention. You know this thing they called war booty? If you look at the Arabic, booty. Not that booty. I mean, war booty. Anima. Ghanima. Ghanima, right? Ghanima. Do you know that all the prophets, when you fight a battle and you get the I like to say booty. You understand what I mean, though, right? And don't be fresh. You're not allowed to take from that. But the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said Allah gave him the permission. Why? In one other narration, it said because of the weakness of the community. So Allah made that exception. Now, I was watching your dress, right? When I say dress, I don't mean like dress. I was watching your dress, right? And I was looking at it, and I wanted to see, like, what kind of material it's made out of. Now, I would say, hmm? I can, oh, I can have it, man, inshallah. I would say it's cotton, right? Am I right? Probably so. Probably cotton, right? But I was making sure it wasn't silk. Why was I making sure it wasn't silk? Because silk is not permissible for men, right? But the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, Rakhasa, he gave... Uh, Rakhasa, exception, you know, an exception, permission. He gave a concession to Abdul Rahman 
and Zubair. Why he give them they could wear the silk? Why? Because they had an itch. So if you study the Islam, everywhere you find in Islam, whatever the commandment is, I guarantee you there is an exception. Because that's the way Allah is. That's how great Allah is. He says, this is how merciful Allah is. There's an exception. Why? Now, let me conclude with this. I was reading the newspaper yesterday, and I was reading uh, uh, a review of a play. In the play, it's called, um, I think, Old Children, My Children, My Africa. And this woman, uh, she was reviewing a theater review. Her name is Elizabeth Vincitelli. And she said something very interesting. She said, this author of this play wrote another play called The Road to Mecca and another one called Blood Knot. And she said that this South African uh, author, playwright, has a style that in the beginning of the play, it's always boring. It's like slow. And she said she was at the theater, and at intermission, when the time, time for the people that came back, they said many of the chairs were empty. And the reason the chairs were empty, because they're like, I don't want to watch this thing. They're boring. And she said, it's a shame because had they stayed in the end, they would have seen it was a great play. And what I did, I left that intermission. What are you talking about? Brother, let me tell you something. I leave with the words of our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He said, this is another hadith. I know that hadith. Your deeds shall be judged by your last deeds. Now, Omar, other, like, unlike you, me, Mustafa, we converted to Islam, reverted. How many of you reverted, converted to Islam? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, I've heard Muslims, my immigrant brothers and sisters, I love all of you, believe me. I've heard them say, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm born Muslim. You're just a convert. That's fair. I'm just a convert. That's true, I'm just a convert. But the prophet said, Every one of you is born a Muslim. It ain't no big deal to be born that. Allah made you that. But, the, but Allah says, وَلَا تَمُوتُونَ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ But don't die except as a Muslim. Not how you were born, how you die. Now, Umar, I don't know about you. Have you ever gone past the speed limit? limit? Right? I don't mind, really. Really, you should stay, you should, you know, stay in the legal speed. You should. But every once in a while, you got to go fast, right? But don't ever be the rabbit. Don't be the rabbit. Don't be the what? Rabbit. What the rabbit is, rabbit is that guy who goes, and he goes in front of everybody. He goes 90 miles per hour. So let him be the rabbit, and you go after him. That's how you do it. Never, don't go ahead of the rabbit, because when the state troopers stop, they're going to stop the rabbit. Now, brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is this. You want to judge the nation of Islam? Okay. But this is the issue. This is the issue. What have we done? Allah has revealed, uh, uh, Allah has written down, you know, you know Minister Louis Farrakhan, the head of the nation of Islam? You know how many times I've spoken to him privately? Many times. I got severely criticized because I did the Juma prayer for the Nation of Islam and their Savior's Day. People in my own community, Imam Surah, why you do that, man? Why you do that? I'm tell you why I did that. I believe that some of the greatest followers of Islam will come out of the Nation of Islam. I believe that. 
and I'm saying, whatever I can do to help, I'm going to continue to help. That's where I came from. In any way I can help, I'm going to help. And I want to warn us as Muslims something that the prophet said, peace and blessing be upon him. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is great. This, deen is, this, this religion is wonderful. I'm glad to be a Muslim, man. This is great. I'm serious, man. I'm just like happy, crazy. The prophet said, for wallahi, for, wall for wallahi, I swear by Allah, which there's no God but him, one of you do the work of the people of paradise. That's good. You make prayer, you fast in Ramadan, you make many pilgrimage, that's good, that's wonderful, until there's only a distance between an uh, arm's length from you and, and, uh, and the uh, hellfire. You begin to do the work of the people of the hellfire. You lie, you cheat, you steal, you murder, and then you enter through the hellfire. And on the other hand, there are some people this close to hell but then they begin, begin to do the work, the good people, the work of Jannah. And then they wind up going to Jannah. Be careful. If you want to do something, the knowledge that you have, share it. Share it with everybody. Share it with the American people. Share it with even those you believe is against Islam. But share it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. We have a great history. Assalamu alaikum.